in this video, we'll try to understand how to design hydraulic circuit in case of vertical double acting cylinder. So this is a vertical movement of a mass. Now, if the mass is vertical, so as you can see over here, then the value of alpha, which is measured from X axis will be 90 degree. So what will happen in this particular case that we have to understand. So the various components of this particular system, they are shown over here. So we are having pump, push button operated direction control wall, then pressure gauge, double acting cylinder which is vertical as we have seen mm is the mass to be moved and this is the upward stroke or forward stroke of this particular cylinder then this is the flow control wall which will adjust the flow or which will restrict the flow coming from the rod end of the cylinder and going to the reservoir so let us start with our simulation of this particular circuit so we are having the lifting of the mass so the flow is coming in this particular direction will be admitted on this side and will cause the movement of the cylinder in the upward direction the flow through this is restricted opening will go to the reservoir so this is the forward stroke now when the push button is operated in such a way that will get the left envelope move then the flow of the fluid through this restricted opening will be admitted over here and the flow will be and the piston will move in the downward direction as shown over here. Now in this particular case, the important consideration for the designing of this particular circuit is that here we are having the vertical moment of the mass and therefore alpha is equal to 90 degree which we have already seen and therefore the static friction force will be zero because already in our previous circuit previous video we have seen that the value of the frictional force static frictional force is given by mu s into r where r is we have already defined as m m g cos alpha and if you substitute alpha is equal to 90 degree over here then we know that cos 90 is zero so there is no static friction force theoretically in this particular case so f s is static friction force mu s is coefficient of static friction r is normal reaction and mm is mass to be moved and g is 9.81 this we already seen in our previous video similarly for the sliding friction force again if you substitute alpha is equal to 90 degree because of the vertical position of the cylinder or you can say mass then the value is zero so we can say that in case of the vertical cylinder this particular values of static friction force and sliding friction force are theoretically zero Now we have to choose the cylinder such that the piston force is greater than the gravitational force on the mass to be lifted. So we can say that weight is nothing but it will always act vertically in the downward direction. So mm into g that is w which will be always acting in the downward direction. So force that will be created over here must be higher than or must be greater than the weight of this particular mass. So we can say that W is equal to mm into G. So mm, suppose we assume that mass to be moved is 300 and G is 9.81, then it is 2943 Newton. So we can say that theoretical piston force during the forward stroke, not the return stroke, during the forward stroke, during the forward stroke must be greater than or equal to w so under the limiting condition we can say that f theoretical is equal to w so using this we have to find out first the piston diameter so we can say that f theoretical is equal to p1 into a1 now a1 will be equal to f theoretical divided by p1 so a1 is nothing but pi by 4 dp square that is the diameter of piston square and under the limiting condition f theoretical is nothing but the weight of the cylinder that is 2943 operating pressure is supposed say 6 mpa so it is 6 into 10 raised to 6 newton per meter square into 4 upon pi so the value of piston diameter in this particular case comes out to be 0 0.02491 meter multiply it by 1000 so it will be 24.99 mm that is 25 mm 
now considering even though theoretically we have seen that there are no frictional forces correct and we have only considered the limiting condition so we will take factor of safety correct of 10 so considering the effect of friction then 10 percent larger piston diameter can be chosen out of this particular calculated diameter so we can say that design diameter will be 1.1 so we have taken 10 percent larger so 100 plus 10 that is 110 percent so it is 1.1 into 25 so it is nearly 27.5 or we can say that 28 mm so this is the diameter that we have chosen for the piston or we can say that for the cylinder so cylinder rod diameter will be you can choose the cylinder rod diameter there will not be any problem for that particular part because during the return stroke the weight will come down correct under the effect of gravity so there will not be any problem during the return stroke so we have assumed dp is equal to 28 mm uh, we have calculated dp is equal to 20 mm and then we can take the value of diameter of the piston rod or piston ring that this is the, this is the diameter that is the piston rod diameter that is dr as 10 mm then alpha is 90 degree that we have already seen and then you can easily calculate the areas so area of the piston is pi by 4 dp square so it comes out to be so in place of dp that is 28 mm convert that value into meter so it is piston area is 6.157 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter square then piston ring area the piston area effective piston area during the return stroke that is during this particular stroke will be you have to subtract the area of this piston rod so it comes out to be so in place of dp it is 28 mm convert that value into meter in place of dr is 10 into 10 raised to minus 3 so you'll get the value of a2 as 5.32372 into 10 raised to minus 4 so these are the calculation of the areas which are there now let us see suppose just now we have seen that we have considered the pressure operating pressure as 6 mpa now suppose the pressure is reduced to 5 mpa then what will happen the piston will move slower in this particular case so let us see f theoretical is equal to p1 into a1 so pressure is 5 mpa so we can say that 5 into 10 raised to 6 newton per meter square and area a1 just now we have fixed the cylinder dimension so it is a1 is 6.157 into 10 raised to minus 4 so that value is 307815 which is greater than the weight of the piston so we can say that it will be lifting the cylinder correct, or lifting the mass and but the moment will be slower because the force is almost equal to the weight of the cylinder now suppose you decrease the pressure to 4 mpa then there will not be movement of the piston at all because f theoretical is again p1 into a1 again pressure is 4 into 10 to 6 area a1 we have already calculated by fixing the dimension that is 6.157 into 10 to minus 4 so you'll get f theoretical is equal to 2462.8 which is less than the weight of the mass itself that is 2943 so there will not be any movement of the piston so in this way we can find out the, we can design the circuit in case of the vertical double acting cylinder thank you very much for watching